used. But we're going to show you uh, Brian Chan's uh, fly tying and uh, uh, technique tape that he uses with his flies. Uh, we're gonna go through each fly uh, and uh, they'll be there for you to uh, tie from and get to know Brian. Brian, uh, uh, we've re really, really had some fun fun times together and caught a lot of big fish. Anyway, Brian will, will explain this, I'll be with him and we're, we're gonna have a lot of fun. Uh, we might mention to you, uh, by the way, he and Phil Rowley's tapes were probably some of my biggest selling uh, DVDs. And I put together uh, on eBay tw uh, 12 the, uh, Stillwater tapes for $20. It's amazing. There's some people maybe you never heard of. Denny Richards is in there. Uh, uh, Kelly uh, Gallup. Just a lot of people that are involved with Stillwater. Some Canadians that maybe you haven't heard of. But uh, if you want to keep these, I know you can get it off my channel. But if you want to keep these for prosperity, you'll always have them. You don't have to worry about downloads, and it'll be right there. This is essentially what it cost me to produce those. But I want to have them in your hands. Uh, one of the big things that I do is work uh, volunteer as soon as this pandemic's over, back with uh, Project Healing Water. I've got books and DVDs. This will help. Anyway, thank you very much, and on with Brian Chan. The next fly is an interesting pattern with a mature rating, right? <laughs> the mature damsel nymph. What's the difference between the immature damsel nymph? Just so what we're, too much. The, yeah, what we're what we're imitating here, Jack, is the fully developed damselfly nymph as they swim off the bottom, get to within about three feet of the surface, and then migrate hor swim horizontally to some long stem bulrush or cattails to emerge as the adult insect. And they do this en masse. And so this is the fully developed or mature nymph, and trout really do key on them. And you're gonna have some flotation in this, obviously. Well, I don't put any flotation in this particular pattern, but we're using it in combination with a floating line. Oh, okay, so it's close to the surface. It's close to the surface. That's right. Well, I'm, I'm anxious to see this because I'm, I'm a big damselfly uh, fan because I've fished them. Uh, I've actually fished more lakes with damselflies outside of the U.S. in Australia and New Zealand than I ever did here. And there, as I understand it, uh, there's a good populations down there. Oh, you think all mud eyes down there. That, and the trout love them. Yeah, I like that name though, then it, mud eye, you know, sort of like, whoa. All right, mature damsel flying in. <laughs> Trout love to eat mature damselfly nymphs. By that I mean nymphs that have fully developed are swimming off the bottom of the shoal or the littoral zone up to within three feet of the surface of the lake and then swimming horizontally till they reach some long stem bulrush or cattail to crawl up out of the water, dry their shacks, and allow the adult to crawl out. So it's completing the life cycle from the nymph to the adult. As anglers, we know when there's a mass emergence of damselfly nymphs because we can see them swimming sinusoidally through the water. I'm gonna tie a mature damselfly nymph using marabou as the body and tail, and then some pheasant tail for the shell back and legs. A very effective pattern, simple to tie. Um, when trout are on those damselfly nymphs that are migrating, you need a go-to pattern. This is the one that I use. So I'll start off with a, a number eight three X long shanked hook. I've got eight aught light olive tying thread. For the body of the fly, I'm gonna be using the Stillwater, Still, Stillwater Solutions Strung Marabou in olive dun in coloration. For the shell back and the, and the um, legs of the fly, I'm gonna be using the light olive dyed pheasant tail from Stillwater Solutions. Take my tying thread, form a base down the shank of the hook. Rib of this fly is gonna be regular copper wire, fine copper wire in the regular, not in red coloration, just in regular copper wire. So tie that in. And then we're gonna take our strung marabou and uh, 
We want to use strung marabou versus woolly bugger marabou because we need the longer fibers of the marabou because we're going to spin it and, and to twist, spin and twist the body to make the body. So marabou like so. And allow some for the tail. That and I'm needing a bit more material. Yeah, so I'm going to take in total about half an inch of marabou when you when you pull it off the the stem. And remember, the, the marabou when it's wet, it's it, when it lays down in wet, it's it's going to be a lot thinner. The tail should be about three quarters of the uh, length of the shank of the hook, about that long. So now I've got the tail tied in. I'm going to take the marabou and I'm just going to grab it by the butts and twist it, spin it, your hand, and then I'm just going to wind it forward and retwist it to make sure it stays tight. We want, want the marabou fibers to stand out because the reason why we're using the marabou is that when this fly's moving through the water, the marabou pulses. And that'll look really great when it's going through the water. So I've tied that off. So I'm just gonna take my rib now. And I'm just gonna carefully wind it through, kind of wiggle it as I wind it through uh, the marabou fibers that are now standing out. So I don't wanna mat them down too much. Tie that off. So, and now we're going to take our our dyed light olive um, pheasant tail. We're going to pull off, cut off three or four fibers for the legs on one side of the fly. So I'm going to take the fiber, I'm going to lay it down the side of the fly. Tie them in so that they're on a, they stand out on an angle. And then I'm going to take the same three or four fibers for the other side of the fly to create the legs. They'll be on the other side, like so. Tie them in. So now we got the legs out both sides. And then I'm just going to take my thine thread and, and carry on forward, tying down the rest of the pheasant tail because it's going to form the shell back on the finished fly. And then I'm going to take some mottled bee chain that's, that's been mottled, uh, painted on olive green in coloration. So cut uh, two eyes off and I'm just going to lash them in right behind the eye of the hook. So figure eight them in so they're in there. Okay, so we got the eyes. And then I'm just going to take a little bit more marabou to finish the, f the head of the fly off. And this time I'm going to tie the marabou fibers in by the tips. So they're tied in and then I'm just going to twist them again. So to, to make it easier to twist them, to grab them, you should wet your fingers, your thumb and your index finger and that will give you a better grip on it. And you're, you're twisting by the butts, so you're trying not to, uh, to damage the hackles and I'm kind of weaving it in and out a bit between the eyes, so, and then tying it off. And then we're just gonna take the tag end, or the butt ends of the uh, pheasant tail, pull them back between the eyes, so, and tie it off. That forms the head and the shell back and then I'm going to leave about 
just under an eighth of an inch in length of to, to further extend the shell back to, to give it a more prominent appearance. One thing about the, the migrating mature damselfly nymphs is that their wing pads get very swollen as they get ready to burst out into the adult. And so by leaving this this quarter inch piece of uh, uh, pheasant tail, it, it just gives the appearance of the swollen wing pads. And the beauty again of using marabou is that it pulses, breathes through the water, and like more natural, more lifelike. So I finished the fly off with a whip finisher. Just make sure that everything's good on the tail, right length. Now fishing this fly, because the because of the mature nymphs are so high in the water column, this is this is a floating line situation. Uh, floating line, 12 to 14 foot leader, tying this fly on. Great to use a loop knot again, because the fly is going to undulate up and down in the water, and those fish will look up and see the nymphs as they're swimming horizontally through the water column. Lots of evidence of hatches occurring or emergence occurring because you see them swimming in the water, or if you're anchored there, you look over the look at your anchor rope as you're pulling it up to move and four or five nymphs fall off your anchor rope. Well, they've crawled up your anchor rope to emerge, and so that should put the light bulb on up in the brain there to tell you what's going on. So here's a nice uh, slender uh, swimming mature damselfly nymph. Trout love to eat damselfly nymphs, whether it's the immature stages of the nymph or the mature damselfly nymph. Mature damselfly nymphs, that, those are nymphs that are fully developed, swim off the bottom of the lake, off the shoulder of the river zone in shallow water, and they swim up to about a three feet below the surface of the lake. Then they swim towards shore or towards some emergent vegetation like this grass that's growing here. The nymphs crawl up out of the water onto the grass. So this is a perfect situation where I am right now. I'm using a slow, clear intermediate sinking line and I'm just fishing a damselfly nymph as it would imitate it swimming towards the grass to emerge. So I'm just using a nice continuous hand strip retrieve, not too fast, and then always interspersing two or three quick pulls just to add a little bit of different action to the fly. So the nymph is swimming, I'm retrieving the fly in the direction that the real nymphs would be swimming. Nice continuous hand strip retrieve. Like so. And then the odd quick pull. Okay. Now, when you're out on the water, you'll know that there's damselflies migrating because you'll see the nymphs in the water and they'll be swimming sinusoidally and they're, you want to make sure you figure out which direction they're swimming because you want to be casting the same direction where you're casting out and then retrieving your fly in the same direction that the real nymphs are swimming.